Forces. The force of gravity. Newton's first law introduced us to the concept of mass. It defined mass as quantifying the amount of inertia or stuff that makes up an object. Thus, your mass is constant no matter where you are in the universe. Whether I stand on the earth or the moon or I'm floating in space, my mass is constant no matter where I go. However, weight is different. In other words, my weight depends on what I'm standing on. It is the force of gravity. That is, if I stand on the earth, my weight is one number. If I stand on the moon, my weight is a different number. But how exactly can I determine what my weight is on each of these planets or moons? Well, for that, we have to look towards Newton's second law. Newton's second law says that force equals mass times acceleration. That is, the amount of force an object experiences depends on its mass and its acceleration rate. Well, for the force of gravity, we can call this force of gravity, or weight, is determined by your mass and then what you're standing on. Otherwise, the acceleration of the Earth on you, which is represented by little g, the acceleration due to gravity. On Earth, that number is 9.8 meters per second squared. So let's calculate my weight on the Earth. Here I am standing on the Earth right here. My mass is 67 kilograms. So let's see what my weight is on the Earth. So if I do force of gravity, or weight, is my mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Well, if my mass is 67 kilograms, and I multiply that by 9.8 meters per second squared, if you calculate it, that is 657 newtons. Remember, newtons are the units of force. Now if I stand on the moon, what is my weight on the moon? Well, let's take our force of gravity equation, which is defined as mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Well, my mass is still 67 kilograms. That's constant no matter where I am. But the for acceleration due to gravity on the moon is much less than that on the Earth. It's 1.67 meters per second squared because the moon is smaller in size and also has less mass. So it can't pull on me as much as the earth can. This calculation results in my weight on the moon to be 112 newtons. So whereas my mass is constant no matter where I am, my weight changes. Now you might further ask, what is my weight in deep space? Well, if we're assuming deep space, that would mean I'm not near any objects uh, which could exert a, a gravitational force on me, and hence I would be truly weightless and have a weight or force of gravity on me equal to zero. The normal force. The normal force is a reaction force due to a surface pushing back on an object and is always perpendicular to the surface. We represent the normal force by the letter F for force and the subscript N for normal. Let's look at a couple of examples. So you can see me here standing on the ground. I'm exerting a force on the ground. This would be the force of well T. The ground in turn pushes back up on me and exerts what we call the normal force. You can see that force is technically perpendicular to the ground. Here's a second example. This woman is exerting a force on the wall. Well, in turn, Newton's third law says the wall has to push back on the woman. That force is perpendicular to the wall, and we call that force exerted by the wall on the woman the normal force. Here's our last example. Here's a crate resting on a ramp. The crate pushes down on the ramp, and in turn, the ramp pushes back up on the crate. This force is equal and opposite and called the normal force. You can also see that it is still perpendicular to the surface of the ramp. The force of friction. Friction is a resistive force between two surfaces. It may oppose motion or it may produce motion. We represent the force of friction by a letter F for force and a subscript lowercase f for friction. The force of friction depends on two things. 
depends on the type of surfaces in contact and how hard the two surfaces are pushing on each other. An example of this is when you rub your hands together in the winter time to keep warm. The amount of friction you can generate or heat depends on two things. It depends on the surface of your hands and then it also depends on how hard the surfaces or your hands are pushing on each other. Represented by these two arrows right here. The harder your hands push on each other the more the normal force will be and the more friction you'll generate and thus the warmer your hands will get. In a mathematical equation the force of friction equals mu times the normal force. This symbol here is pronounced mu, M-U, and it's represented as a coefficient of friction. Mu is typically a number between 0 and 1 that gives you an approximate idea of about how much friction there will be between two surfaces. Of course, the additional thing you need to know is how hard those surfaces are pushing on each other to figure out the total force of friction. Do you ever wonder why it takes more force to get something moving than to keep it moving? Well, in this example, if you were to push a refrigerator from rest, it takes a lot of force to get the refrigerator to start moving. But once you apply enough force and you get it moving, it doesn't take as much force to keep it moving. So if we look at these forces, the first force you're pushing against is the force of static friction. This is the friction of rest. Once you oppose that force and push harder than that force, and the refrigerator starts moving, now you're opposing the force of kinetic friction, which is less than the force of static friction. And the reason why is that the coefficient of static friction is actually greater than the coefficient of kinetic friction. That is, it takes a lot more force to get something moving than to keep it moving. Let's take a look at an application of Newton's second law. Here's someone here pushing this crate with a force of 50 newtons against a frictional force of 30 newtons. So if they push against this crate, what's the resultant acceleration rate of the crate? Let's calculate a few things first. What is the weight of the box? Well, we know weight is just another word for the force of gravity on the box, which is just mg. Let's put our numbers for mass of the box and the acceleration due to gravity and calculate it. Looking here, we know the mass of the box is 10 kilograms. The acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second, and multiplying those together we get 98 newtons. Question, what is the normal force acting on the box? Well, if we draw that normal force on the box here, we can see that it's the force of the ground pushing back up on the box. Well, what is that a reaction force from? Well, the box is exerting its force of gravity or weight down on the ground. So in this case, our normal force is just equal to the force of gravity, which we just calculated was 98 newtons. So the normal force is also 98 newtons, since it's the reaction force to the force of gravity in this case. And finally, what is the resultant acceleration of the box? Here we look at Newton's second law in just a more specific form that not just the force produces the mass to accelerate, but the net force. Net force is just a term that refers to the sum of many forces. So if you look at the box right here, you see there's two forces. This person's pushing on the box and applying a force on the box in this direction that's 50 newtons. So this is our applied force again. This person's then opposing the force of friction, which is pushing back this way. So we can label all those forces on our diagram. We had the no force of gravity of the weight of the box pushing down, the surface pushing back up as its normal force, and then this person pushing with an applied force trying to overcome the force of friction. This net force is between the applied force and the force of friction. Let's write those in and what else we know to find the acceleration rate. So we see that the net force is the applied force minus the force of friction. The applied force is 50 newtons the force of friction is 30 newtons. So our net force here is 20 newtons. That's going to produce what acceleration rate on a 10 kilogram box? Well, here you can now see we just divide 20 by 10 to get the acceleration rate 
and that's going to be 2 meters per second squared. Thank you for watching and see you in class.